Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on what are the causes of disease. So there are 10 general causes of disease, and we're going to do a brief overview of all 10. So the first category is infectious disease. Infectious disease is caused by a pathogenic microbe of some sort. So a fungus, a bacteria, a virus, those are all going to lead to some type of infectious disease. Our second category or cause of disease is a neoplasm. Um, A neoplasm is an uncontrolled cell growth, and it's going to be abnormal growth. So this is going to lead to a tumor. And these can be benign, harmless tumors, or they can be malignant, which are cancerous tumors. And I don't want you to stress too much over how that happens and how you tell the difference, because we're going to do an entire little mini module on that later. Our third cause of disease is an immunologic disease. Um, And those are caused by either an overreaction of the immune system or an underreaction of the immune system. And then the one that you hear about a lot these days are autoimmune diseases. And autoimmune diseases happen when the body attacks its own tissues. Um, So those are our first three categories. We're going to draw a line so I can squeeze some more in on this slide. And we're going to start with cause number four, which is a nutritional disease. Uh, Nutritional diseases are are caused by insufficient resources, typically protein or vitamins. Um, So scurvy would be an example of a nutritional disease. Category number five is a metabolic disease. Metabolic diseases are disruptions of the biochemical pathways in your metabolism. So um, diabetes is the one that comes to mind for most people. But basically, they're going to often be related to nutritional diseases because they're often going to be connected to carbs, fats, and protein intake and how those are metabolized in the body. So there's our first five. And number six is going to be a genetic cause of disease. Um, So a genetic cause of disease is just going to be inherited via a defective gene or a defective chromosome. Number seven is a congenital disease. Congenital diseases are a little more difficult to think about. So a congenital, di- a congenital disease is a defect in fetal development. So they can be a physiological or an anatomical disease. Um, they can be related to genetic disorders, but they can also uh, be related to causes um, from environmental exposure, risk factors during pregnancy. So it could be due to exposure of the mother to some type of chemical during pregnancy. It can be the consumption of alcohol during pregnancy, but they can also be spontaneous. So a congenital defect um, at birth, because that's what congenital means, is that it's present at birth, does not always have to be genetic, but it also doesn't have to be related to exposure. You can just have spontaneous congenital defects. Number eight is a trauma. A trauma is um, cause a, a traumatic disease is going to be caused by a specific injury, typically a force injury that mechanically disrupts a structure. Um, the easiest example for me to give you of that is if something damages your pancreas that makes you incapable of producing insulin anymore, then you are going to develop diabetes. But that would be a trauma based disease, not a uh, metabolic based disease or a nutritional disease. And um, so the, the disrupted, the disrupted structure is going to lead to disrupted function because anatomy determines physiology. Number nine is a physical agent. So physical agents, what does that mean? It means you have diseases um, that can be caused by exposure to physical conditions, typically environmental conditions. So for example, extreme cold, it can also be things like electric shock, exposure to radiation, or poisons in the environment though. And then the last category is inflammatory disease. Now inflammatory disease is normally considered a secondary disease that's associated with one of the previous nine. And we're going to do a whole other mini module on inflammation. So we're just going to very brief right now. So it's typically going to be a secondary disease, um, and it's going to lead to uh, swelling um, and inflammation of different body tissues. So those are your notes, and I hope those are helpful.